Revelation chapter 3, from verse, just two verses actually, 7 and 8. And then sometimes we include 9. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who holds or who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts. And shuts and no one opens. I know your works. God knows you. He knows me. See, I have set before you an open door. And no one can shut it. For you have a little strength. And you have kept my word. And have not denied my name. Praise the Lord. That word is true. And it's ever true. <clears throat> um, what the Lord has done for this, for this particular church is the fact that it's proving to the church that it's only what I open that gets opened. It's only what I shut that gets shut. I can use people, I can use a person, I can use means, I can use circumstances and situations. If I don't open, I don't open. If I open, I open, and no one can shut. And so what naturally will result in opening, if I don't want it open, it will not open. Then we will judge him. And what naturally should not open, if I want it open, it will be open. Men, we just call it miracle, that's all. But as far as God is concerned, um, when I just said, Yoruba, he's just doing his no more bidding. Just doing his works. And that's why we say, your strength may be small. doesn't matter. I've opened the door. So that means that you'll be defined by achievements and success, completions, accomplishments in life in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God in the highest. What stops people will not stop you. In the name of Jesus. What distracts people will not succeed against you. In the name of Jesus. But you know why? It says because though you don't have the capacity to do this, but you continue to do with the little you have. You have maintained my word. You have refused to deny my name. You have pleased me. You have honored me. You have glorified me. In Yoruba, etigbemini. So he decided, I will honor you. So that even in your failure, you will succeed. That's God. Whew. That's God. That's God. That's the God we serve. And when you see it as personal, it becomes a rhema to you. And that's what is happening to us in this church this year. With this in mind, open with me to 1 Corinthians in chapter 10. I'll read from verse 14. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, though many, are one bread and one body. For we all partake of that one bread. Observe Israel after the flesh. Are not those who eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar, the altar of sacrifice? What am I saying then? That an idol is anything or what is offered to idol is anything? Rather, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. 
You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the lost table and of the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than him? So in other words, if you claim to have a covenant with God through the blood of Jesus, you cannot be in any other covenant. It's not possible. Christianity. So why don't you just face it and be proud of it until you know the greater truth? What they are saying in your Bible is this. There's a, there's a saying, how do you interpret it? So the fact that I'm a Christian does not mean that I should not follow the call it, the, the glibly call it culture or tradition. In other words, they're going to worship idols. They say Christianity does not prevent idol worshiping. It does. It does. That's what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Really? Pastor, this is Christianity now. Otherwise, why, who is this even who? Yeah. Okay, let me continue. Verse 23. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify, not everything builds up and encourages in the, my Christian work. Let no one seek his own. That's the problem of the body mostly. People are very selfish. By each one, the other's well-being. Eat whatever is sold in the, in the meat market. Ask no question for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness and all is fullness. If any of those who do not believe invites you to dinner and you desire to go, eat whatever he said before you, asking no question for conscience sake. But if anyone says to you, this was offered to idols, do not eat it. For the sake of the one who told you and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. Conscience, I say, not your own, but that of the other. For why is my liberty judged by another man's conscience? Or, why, or for why is my liberty judged by another man's conscience? But I partake with thanks. But if I partake with thanks, why am I evil spoken of? For the food over which I give thanks. Therefore, whether you eat, this is key, this is where I'm going to be preaching from. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. When it says give no offense, that is don't cause anybody to stumble. Don't cause the Jews or the Gentiles or the church to stumble. Be conscious of the glory of God in everything. Praise the Lord. Now, if you remember where we started from, we started from the fact that this church honored Jesus. Jesus saw a group of people who honored him, who pleased him, who glorified him. He said, I've opened it up for you. So that's where I'm taking it from. So I want to just speak on that honor and the glory of God, as it were. And that's why in verse 31 of John, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he said, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, whatever you do, he said, make sure that you glorify God with it. It will keep the door open forever. Simple. Yeah. But let me just quickly, within the context of this 1 Corinthians chapter 10, let me just quickly begin to say certain things. He says, therefore, my beloved, Flee idolatry. What's idolatry? Whatever, no matter how wonderful, no matter how good looking, no matter how good reasoning, how the, good, how the, how the reason behind it is good, if it does not glorify God, it's idolatry. If to give the praise and the glory and the honor to someone or something else other than the creator God, it's idolatry. Is somebody hearing me? Glory be to God in the highest. 
idolatry. See, I speak as, I speak as to wise people. Glory be to God in the highest. Judge for yourself what I say. That is, come on. Think about it. The cup of blessings, that is when we take communion together, the cup of blessings which will bless, is it not of the blood of Christ? So why should I give attention to the blood of animals that is done to go or go or any other thing? Or some occultic or witchcraft somewhere? And you think that's the power? Why? It says, otherwise, you are turning this very process of coming to the table of the Lord into idolatry because you don't believe it. And so even in, hey, come on, church. Here today, what are we doing? We are talking Jesus. Come on. Hey, we are worshiping. We are singing. Hey, hello. We are reading the Bible. Come on. Right? If the spirit behind this is show off, it's idolatry. If the only reason I'm doing this is so that I can be articulate, I can be good looking, I can be, hey, yeah. If that's the only reason. If the main reason is not that he may be glorified, idolatry smoke. It will be thickened for a moment and then fizzle away. Even this, much less any other thing in life. Even before I come to church, it's like, hey, God, don't let me get disgraced today. It's about you before them. I don't like this. Before I came to church, don't let me get there. They say, ah, my clothes is not good. Ah, you missed it before you left home. I'm not saying you should dress sharply to church, but if that's your main aim, you missed it. Uh-uh. But if your main aim is to serve God, to connect with your maker, <sighs> He will make what you wear good. Amen. He will open doors for you where you don't even expect it. Now you can begin to understand that those who like to keep their life, that's why I just said, if, you struggle, if all your struggle is to keep your life, you will lose it. But if your struggle is to keep, I mean, is to connect with Jesus, he will keep your life for you. He says, it's not the blessing and the, bless, and, the, and the bread which you break. It's not, it's not the communion of the body of Christ. For we do are many, but we all, it's one bread. <laughs> uh, one body, and so we partake of one bread. Now, so observe the literal Israel. After the flesh, literal. Uh, and not those who eat of the sacrifice become partakers of the altar. And that's what it means. You partake of that altar. You submit yourself to that deity. What am I saying then? That I, I don't is anything or what is over to I don't is anything? No. Rather, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons. And that's the truth. This is the Bible. I'm not saying it. I mentioned the first service. Let me quickly say. In as much as I, I, Pastor Tao, as your pastor, by the grace of God today, and as the leaders of Fountain, myself and all the others, in as much as we want you to belong to every political party, we don't want you to become to join any court. Because there are people, there are many situations today that they will tell you point blank that you will not amount to anything politically except you join their group. What group? Until you do some blood, blood what? There are many houses, they call it maybe clubhouses all over Lagos. Clubhouses. They say, ah, oh, no, we just go out to club. They run you. Or courty groups. And, 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 and boys, they show you stuff. So like, when you come, you join their group. And then you enter into a covenant so you can get contracts. Do you think that contract will sustain your family? There are some business areas that you can never delve into. They said you must come and join there are marketplaces in, in Lagos that they won't allow you. You can't have a store until you join. 
witchcraft, demonism of the highest order. They'll make sure that you don't say, ah, because you don't belong to their group. They'll fly in the night to do all sorts in front of your store so that nobody will come there in the morning. People will enter their own, they will enter your own. Right there, right there. It's because you don't know who you are. And the day you compromise yourself to join them, no, you know what you You mortgage your Christianity for the peanuts you're going to get from your store. You mortgage your life for peanuts. Okay. Yeah, the door is open. In the name of Jesus. Uh, making it in life is not do or die. No, it's not. It is true. We are not dying. Jesus has already died for us. In the name of Jesus. So, some things to get clear in this scripture. Verse 20 makes it clear. It says, whatever the sacrifice, I mean, the Gentile sacrifice, the sacrifice to demons. So, please get that clearly. Caught in the schools, in the universities, even in secondary school nowadays. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord, verse 21, and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Pastor, why is saying this? I need to say it. Because it's coming out from that same scripture. Say, because you honor me, you please me, you have glorified me. Open doors. I said, otherwise, you'll be provoking God to jealousy and you cannot succeed. He's so jealous over you. That you can't. What is between you and God is more than what's between a man and his wife. Let me tell you how much of a treasure you are to God. And that's what the Bible, that's what Paul was praying. He said that God will open the eyes of the sin that you may bring to realize the riches of the glory, of his glory in you as a treasure. Having said that, in verse 23, it says, all things are lawful. Now, follow me closely so that we don't get into legalism here. It says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are not, lo- I mean, are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Hello? You know what that means? I am free. Because I just quickly want to state here that what I'm saying today, I'm not calling you now or inviting you to come and action living. No. I mean, working on action living. So, no. Rather, I'm inviting you to the full liberty of the Son of God. And you see it before we finish. So I'm not talking legalism, no. No, 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 I'm not. At all. At all. I'm talking freedom in Christ Jesus. So it's not because... So it may be lawful, but it's not expedient. But not everything is expedient. Not everything builds up. And the reason you don't do certain things is so that you don't become a stumbling block for other people. Hello. Praise the Lord. So in the light of that, hear what Paul had to say to them. He said, "Uh if anyone of those who do not believe invites you to dinner and you desire to go, eat whatever is said before you. Ask no question. Don't say, who slaughtered this ram that you are giving me? How did you kill the malu that you are giving me or the cow that you are giving me? You are looking for trouble. Better sit down and bless the food and eat. Okay. Uh, eat whatever I said before you, asking no question for conscience sake. But if anyone then says to you that this was what we offered to the idols, then don't eat it. That's what the Bible says. Then do not eat it for the sake of the one who told you and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord. So consider, I mean, for conscience I say, not of your own, but of the other. For why is your only body rejoice? Because you receive your thanksgiving, so you know it's okay, but they don't know it's okay. That's the problem. Praise the Lord. So, but if I partake with thanks, verse 30, why am I evil spoken? That's what I'm saying. 
Glory be to God in the highest. So it's not legalism. There's no hard and fast rule about it. So give no offense. Don't cause it to happen. But look at what 31 says. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. In other words, live conscious of the glory of God. Why? I'll quickly tell you. Why? I'll show you. The Bible says all things consist in him. The Bible says that he has given you all that pertains to life and godliness. The Bible says he's blessed you with every blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's put everything for you to have a good life. See, and God enjoys you having a good life. Let me tell you this. Sex is good. If sex is bad, God wouldn't have created it. That you have a desire for sex is good. It's like you have a desire for water or for food. Yes. It's what, the way and manner you go about quenching that desire or satisfying that desire that can be seen. You won't say because you are hungry, you eat a bowl full of cyanide. You die. Straight. They say, I'm very hungry. And they say, look at jollof rice. But there is cyanide there. Cyanide, you would rather call it majele. This one has death in it. And you are hungry. Will you eat? It's the same way. So there's nothing wrong if you have the desire. It's the way you go to satisfy it that can be a problem. And God that has given you that desire has ways and manners they can be satisfied and enjoyed. Everything is given to you to enjoy. And if you know that, then listen to this quickly. Anytime you hear God declare his pleasure over a person, a people, or a place, heaven has opened. Anytime. If God we say or allude to you are satisfying me heaven opens Jordan this is my beloved son or you are my beloved son in whom I were pleased heaven opened on the matter of transgression guess what this is my beloved son hear ye him heaven opened through him how be it because the kingdom of God is inside of us it opened that he consumed everything Hello? And the same thing here, Revelations. Your strength is small. You have kept my word. You have not designed my name. Alluding to, you are, you are a sheer delight to me. Open doors. Everywhere. Proverbs 16, 7. That one is easy. What does it say? When the ways of a man are pleasing to God, what happens? He will cause even your very enemies. They will become your friends. Literally, straight. Open doors for relationship and everything. But what is it that pleases him that way, that glorifies him that way? Consciousness of the fact that he created you and created everything in the first place. So I said, so what are we asking him to do? Live conscious of his, of his pleasure. Live conscious of his, of his glory. Again, like I said, it's not for his to work on action. No, no, no. It's just to know that everything you enjoy comes from him. So what does that tell you? Be grateful. And you can confirm that straight away. If you look at Colossians 3, 17... Look at it. And whatever you do, come on, everybody, help me read. In word or deed, do all what? Come on, go ahead. We are back to the same thing. Can you see when the guy said, it doesn't matter whether he's been killed to dust, to idol or whatever, as long as you are, you are not telling me that, and I am thanking God for it. That's, that's the truth. I'm glorifying God in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give God the glory. Glory, glory be to God in the highest. Yes. It says the glory of anything, including man, is what they are meant by God to be. Though not yet exactly, that's why we're looking at man, but um, I, I, this will be maybe next Sunday or some other Sunday. But where I'm going particularly again is in hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> Romans 11 36. For of him, and through him, and to him. Come on, church, help me. Come on, help me. I can't hear you. Help me. Help me. Help me. The things you have and the things you are still believing God for. All things. And what happens to him? To whom be what? So, if you are considering everything on earth in life, 
Think of his glory straight away. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Command those who are rich in this present age, come on, not to be what? I can't hear you, church. Come on, help me read. Nor what? To trust in uncertain riches. But where should they put their trust? The living God. Who does what? Richly what? Wow. So God gives you all things richly to enjoy, including wealth, including health, including sex, including fame, all things. If you go for it without God, it becomes idolatry. The reason he created it in the first place is for you to enjoy. Can't you read it there? Is that, I didn't write to enjoy it there. All things. But the day you make that thing superior to God, idolatry. That's a sin. The woman that sees her husband as God, you have killed him. Only you don't know. Is somebody hearing me? Your husband is a blessing to you. But he can never take the place of God. Your wife is a blessing. She can never take the place of God. Your boss is a blessing. She can, he or she can never take the place of God. The day you make them God and they accept trouble. When Herod was told, this is not the voice of man. It is the voice of, of God. And he's, he, 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 he was struck dead. He was eating with worms alive. It's in the Bible. I was thinking of this. I remember a song when, my, when, we, were, when we were at university, when I joined the CU. He says, let me hear you. He says, you are the Lord, that is your name. You will never share your glory with air. You will never share your glory with anybody. Almighty God, that is your name. The day you make your pastor God, and if he doesn't quickly deny it, eh, eh, let's give him glory. You want to kill him. Only God must be given the glory. But that doesn't mean that you should be rude to pastors now. That shows that you are not wise. Here, we are talking to wise people. Wise people. No, no, no. So, when you give, give it all, all things, what? To enjoy. Now, I asked the question in the first service. I said, now that you know this, what kind of attitude would that provoke in you? Gratitude. Humility. Because you know that it's God that gives it. It's God that multiplies it. So, in enjoying it, you say, I am thankful to God. That's why I receive it with what? Thanksgiving. So, you can't judge me anymore. You can see anything you want. I've received it with thanksgiving. God is going to give me more, no matter how you complain. No matter even how much you fast against me, it won't work. Because I'm receiving it with what? Thanksgiving. And God says, my heart, I'm grateful to him, not you. Shut up. It will provoke gratitude, humility, selflessness. This attitude will make you forgive people easily. You will know that they are not the one behind your problems. It will deliver you from selfishness completely. So, one more to ask so, how do I glorify God? Simple now. Number one, trust Him, because that's what they did. Though your strength is small, but you held on to me. The Bible says, hey, they that come to God must what? Hebrews 11, 6. Must what? Believe that he is and that he, he will reward them. Then he goes on to say, without faith, it is impossible to what? It is impossible to please God, impossible to honor God, impossible to glorify God. Impossible. So you must trust him. And number two, then thank him for everything. First Thessalonians 5, 18, in everything, give what? Thanks. In some things? In all things. And see, he has made all things for you to enjoy. So in all these things, thank him. Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is what God expects of you, of me. 
rather than all the complaints all the day. Thank God for goodness sake. Ha, ha. For that your wonderful wife, wonderful husband, wonderful children. Just thank God. Pastor, you know the trouble I'm going through. Some are praying that you should go have your kind of trouble. You have to go. I remember clearly. Jesus in Luke 17. Ten lepers. And they were all healed. Only one returned. He said, Why well, are not ten? Where are they now? Why is it that it's only this Gentile that returned? What did he come to do? To glorify God. He was shouting from afar. I'm grateful, I'm thankful. The Bible says he glorified God. John 11. This sickness is not unto death. Verse 4. But it is such that the name of God will be glorified. What if you start to glorify God in your problems? I was telling them on Thursday, I said, where are you taught this is it, and you are suddenly betrayed. Then instead of feeling like committing suicide, let me say, there must be a line for his glory here. I worship you. You'll be surprised that that will be the richest man for your greatest growth in life. If you must be glorified. Anywhere he is glorified, heavens will open. I don't care what you have lost all your life. Can't you see you are at the threshold of an unusual breakthrough right now? Now you get it. Open doors. Amen. I say in the name of Jesus, open doors. Amen. And then, of course, that same chapter 11, I think in verse 40 there about, said, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? He said, roll away the stones. Lazarus! And before he said Lazarus, he said, you know what he did? He said, Father, I what? Can you see everything coming together? Lazarus comfort. I don't know what you have lost. What is dead? There is an open door for you. Yeah. The stones are rolled away. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. And no one can shut it. Open doors. Open doors. Open doors. Open doors. Open doors. This is your year. In the name of Jesus. And let me declare over you, it's not a thing I like to say, but it's what God said, I and the children that God has given unto me, we are for signs in our generations. Come on, give the Lord a big shout of praise.